Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Today we are discussing a 2022 resurrection of a model originally launched in 1977. This is the Vacheron Constantin Historique. It is the 222. And the 222 harks back to the York Heisick original from 77 that was part of that charter family of integrated bracelet sports and sport T watches including the Rolex Oyster Quartz, IWC Jumbo Ingenieur, the Patek Philippe Nautilus, the Gerard Perigo Laureato, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak and many others. So this watch is coming back in an era when Vacheron already has its full-fledged sports watch, the Overseas, which was inspired by the 222. That releases this historique re-edition to be something more like a sporty dress watch than an all-out dress watch. It's compact, like the original, 37 millimeters in diameter, 8.3 millimeters thick, and 3N yellow gold. It's 45.3 millimeters from lug to lug, and if we measure end length to end length, the total horizontal distance across the wrist is 48 millimeters. When you throw it on the wrist, it does look like a commanding timepiece, certainly a visual impression larger than 37 millimeters. That's the effect of the tonneau case and the integrated bracelet. It just does look bigger. That said, on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, I'm having no trouble wearing this. You can see the bracelet splays out on each side, so I'm not really at the limits there. I think you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. The bracelet, like almost every other part of the watch, is better built than on the original. You can see that the tolerances are extreme with almost no daylight showing between the links and only a tiny bit admitted just to give it flexibility. The polish of the expanding bevel on the lug hood continues down the shoulders of the links. For the most part, it's satinated. You can see that lovely geometric intermediate link and the roughly barbell-shaped primaries. Taking a quick look, you'll also appreciate that the bracelet is held together using screws rather than pins and sleeves, and you'll also appreciate that there are a few removable links in here, including an intermediate size link should you be in between sizes that will allow you to fine tune the fit internally you can see there's twin trigger release and it is a double fold non-sequential either side can close first you can see there's a little bit of burnishing on here this is a pre-owned watch so full disclosure there maltese cross logo of the brand twin trigger release for security and the integration here of lug and bracelet feels more extreme than on the nautilus or the royal oak the tolerances really are tight and this has incredibly little lateral movement it feels imposing. It feels redoubtable. Taking a look at the case, you can see that the edges of the case are canted downward, which mitigates against fit problems and assists the ergonomics. Lug hoods are satinated. We do have that expanding bevel at the edge of each lug. We have a little white gold Maltese cross right here. It's actually, from what I understand, a combination of white gold and palladium. Now, taking a quick look at the dial, you can see where the plinth for the third generation overseas came from. It actually derives from the original 222. So we have this plinth with a little angled polished bevel. It has a very short satin finished outer face. It is circular satin finished underneath the serrated bezel structure, which you can see is all of satin finish. And we have a Vacheron Maltese cross on the crown. It is a push down crown. The watch is only 50 meters water resistant, so that's more than a dress watch, but with a push down rather than screw down crown, this is not a watch I would advise you take swimming. Inboard, the richness continues. We have a lovely matte yellow dial, it's a sort of matte yellow gold color with authentic yellow gold indices, hands, logo, and date frame. You can see that the inner bezel is elaborately mirror polished. And then the watch, though it does not include a seconds hand, it does actually have a hacking or stop seconds function. So when I pull the crown out, the balance does stop. So it does have hacking, even if it does not have a stop seconds visible. Taking a quick look, we have a quick set system for the date, not present on the 77 original. And we have plenty of loom. These days it's super luminova rather than tritium. Jörg Heisick, then a young German watch designer, penned the original 222 
often attributed to Gerald Genta during the 90s and 2000s. Today, we recognize that the 222 was Jörg Heisig's work, and it influenced heavily the 1996 Overseas, designed by Dino Modolo and Vincent Kaufman. So this watch and the watch it inspired directly are both in the catalog at the same time. Turning it all over, you can see one of the big changes compared to antiquity is that we have a new movement here. This isn't the old JLC 920 doing business as a Vacheron 1120. This is a Vacheron 24552. It's actually their own movement. It's not a modified JLC. The rotor featuring the image of the original 222 logo and the reflection of the bezel design. Note that it's 22 karat gold, not 21, not 18, definitely not rose gold coated tungsten. You always want to see the densest gold or platinum used for a rotor and mass, and we have that here. You can see a couple of different finishes. We have satin, we have polish, we have media blast, and then if you look at the edge, it's also mirror beveled on its periphery, which is quite attractive. You'll wonder, what was the original significance of that 222? Well, 1977 was the 222nd anniversary of the founding of Vacheron, which is the oldest continuously operating watch brand in Switzerland, depending how you evaluate the claims of Bayat Haldemann. Now, taking a quick look, you can see the Geneva hallmark on the case, but also on the movement, and it is finished to that standard. It's a unidirectional winder with ceramic rotor bearings for high efficiency of 40-hour power reserve, a four hertz speed rate. It's got the stop seconds, the quick set date. It pivots on 27 joules and it is adjusted in a high horology and chronometer standard five positions. Finishes to a high grade. You can see things like the beveling within the jewel and screw sinks, the mirrored beveling on the edge of bridges, lustrous luminous Cote de Genève, black polished screw heads, engine turning on the base plate, solarization on the barrel. You can just see it. Solarization on the ratchet wheel and satination on the train wheels. It's a well finished movement deserving of the Geneva Hall. Mark. These watches are destined to be rare. Production will be low. Demand is high. Not everyone who asks for one will get an allocation, and it's likely that there will be several different versions broken up over yellow gold, maybe white, rose gold, platinum, and also steel. So it's not a given that yellow gold will be in production indefinitely. It is, however, the first of the reborn 222s. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.